Hello again, Fleet Commanders. Tiberius back with another episode of my new player tutorial series. And today we're going to be focusing on operations level 28 through 30. I apologize getting this video out a little later than I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to make this once I finished 30 and got to 31. Got a little sidetracked, had some other projects going on, and uh, as you can see I've actually progressed already to 32. But I can still circle back, put this content out there for you, and kind of give you an idea of what to expect, what to look forward to, what's going on uh, in these ops levels. It's not a whole lot of changes compared to a lot of the uh, other levels that we've talked about before, uh, but we're going to dive right in and we're going to show a couple of uh, statistics. We're going to do a little breakdown, a little analysis of a few key things that are going to show where the big significance is uh, in terms of uh, the differences between you know certain things, uh, mainly with ships. So. Congratulations, you got to Ops 28. Now you're in that range where you're starting to get a little bit more researches available to you. You're starting to get a little bit more uh, in the terms of ships that are now available to you. Uh, your away team store, if you've been keeping up with that and doing your away team missions, you should have some more blueprints available. And we'll look at those. Actually, let's just look at the shipyard first. Let's start here. We'll start with the ships. That's the fun part, right? That's what people have the questions on. So we go to shipyard level. So when you were 26, 27, you get the Vidar and the Meridian at 25, the Horizon at 26. Uh, these are also the 26 combat ships, the faction ships that became available to you. In the last video we talked about just building a cheap legionary or a D3 just so you can get the cloaking for it as well. Do the cloaking daily so you can unlock some of that research. but. Uh, you don't really need to tear these ships up, and we're going to show you why when we talk about the next group of ships. Not these hijacked things that you get at 27. Skip right over this crap, because these are junk. They cost just as much as these things to upgrade, plus have an additional cost because you need the plutonium and stuff from the rogues, uh, from the augment store. They don't really give you much more strength, and most importantly, these ships are not scrappable. You cannot scrap them to get any of these materials back, whereas unlike these guys, eventually you can scrap them when you get to higher levels. You'll get some resources from them, four-star materials that you can use uh, to either upgrade a four-star ship like the Jellyfish or to get some prime researches done. A whole bunch of other videos uh, covering that topic about scrapping Mayflowers or Legionaries and whatnot, getting four-star materials, getting you know prime officers, prime other efficiencies and those kinds of things too. Um, the Stella you also get at 27, but then we get into the the other faction ships. And you're talking about the Bortos, the Saladin, the Centurion. Uh, these are going to be your bread and butter ships. These are what you're going to use to carry you all the way to 34 until you get your epic. At 30, you also get access to the Sarcophagus. This ship is only used for territory capture. It's sourced through Cosmic Cleanup. It is incredibly slow to source through Cosmic Cleanup because, because they consider it to be an epic ship. You get four blueprints per week, which means it's going to cost you like 20 weeks to build the ship, to get the blueprints for it to build it. The ship itself, not good at all. It's a singular ship. It has a huge damage bonus when fighting on nodes during a territory takeover. So only if it's in a contested you know, territory situation, and you're either have this thing parked on a node, or you're attacking something that's parked on a node, do you get this huge damage bonus? While it's traveling, flying through the system, trying to get to that node, incredibly slow, because it's a battleship with very low impulse speed, as we'll see right here. Impulse speed is only 80, pretty slow, it's just cruising, crawling right along. It is incredibly weak and incredibly vulnerable, and it gets destroyed very easily. And because it's considered an epic ship, it also has a high repair cost. It also has a high cost to upgrade it. Don't waste your time on it. Honestly, there's so many other things to focus on. You're going to want to save those cosmic cleanup items here for coming up at 31. You're going to want to get an amalgam, which is much better. This is your base raider. Uh... It's going to have some better warp speed too. Eventually, it'll get you know if you want to do overnight mining in deep space. But this is the ship that everybody raids bases with because of the the, the extra bonus, where you take an additional percentage of an enemy's cargo, 
above what your cargo limit is. So if the thing only has a million and you're attacking a base of a guy who's got like 20 billion in resources, you get a, a bonus on top of that. Um, so you might come back with two and a half million or three million in resources. You're like, but the cargo hold only holds a million. How am I doing this? Because of the amalgam's ship ability. And as you tier this up, this percentage gets better and better. You also slap on Bator, who's another good officer specifically for this. Uh, she's the rare officer. She adds a 10% bonus at, at her first level to this. So you start taking bigger chunks. And you can take very big scoops off of people. I've gotten 40, 50, 60 million at a time uh, per scoop raiding bases. Obviously, these are guys who had, you know, 100 to 200 billion in total resources uh, between, you know, their par steel, tritanium, dilithium, and whatnot. Uh, and I would, I would, it would take forever, obviously, to continue raiding them. Uh, but as opposed to getting a million off of a faction miner or a horizon or something like that. Uh, so this is what you're going to want to, you know, it's a big difference. Uh, and this is what you're going to want to save your cosmic cleanup tokens for once you get your Vidar, your Franklin, and your Discovery, the last two ships are the Sarcophagus and the Amalgam, currently. Other things may be added later, um, but right now it's just those five ships, and the Amalgam is far more valuable than the Sarcophagus. Last ships in this range at 30 that become available are your Faction Miners. We're going to talk a little more about them separately in just a second, but for right now I want to go back and I want to focus on these three ships right here. Your Bortos, which is your Klingon battleship, the Saladin, which is your Federation Interceptor, and the Centurion, which is your Romulan Explorer. As I mentioned, these are going to be your bread and butter ships. What it, you're going to get one of the, pick one, whichever one, you know, is your, your faction you're going with. They're all very good. They all have their uses. Excuse me. People like the different firing patterns of some of the ships better than others. People will typically say the Saladin is the best of the three because of the firing pattern of the Saladin and that it has a very... Uh, its big weapon fires at the start of round one. So if you have people that have a critical percentage boost or someone like Harrison who lowers shield percentages during round one or ROM or something like that, uh, that big shot with the Saladin hits for... A good amount can cause some serious damage, might even end the fight right there before round two even gets to start. The other ships also do have big weapons as well, and we'll look at that in just a second. Um, as I mentioned, your bread and butter, you're going to level one of these guys up. You're going to get it up to tier eight, tier nine over the course of this window here, uh, between 28 and 32, realistically. And, you know, it'll be about 1.4, 1.5 million in power, depending on your research and your officers that are aboard it. Your lower deck officers, adding extra abilities, the different crew you've got, as the captain seat, and things like that, and what their levels are, all the kinds of different things that are obviously add to the strength and the power of your ship. You are going to skip right over these guys at 32, because these things take an incredible amount of resources to upgrade. And by the time you get there and get the ship and spend all the, the faction credits to get the blueprints and get it really upgraded to the point where it's better than your Saladin or Bortas or Centurion, you'll already be level 34 and you'll probably be pretty close to unlocking one of these ships. So you don't want to commit a bunch of resources here to get these up to tier 4, tier 5 to find out, okay, well now it's slightly better than my maxed out Saladin but I'm already Ops 34 now by the time I got it there, and now I want to devote all these resources into whatever ship of these that I'm working towards, but now I'm behind because I just wasted a whole bunch of them on the 32. So the, the general pattern is you unlock a 26 with cloaking, do a little something with it, get it up, you know, Tier 1, Tier 2, not really a lot. You just want to be able to do the cloaking dailies with it for now. You'll circle back to working it up later when it's cheaper, after you get some efficiency research is done, because you're just going to use it for scrapping. You want to max out a 28 as quickly and efficiently as you can. Skip over the 32s, and then get to 34 and get your epic unlocked. And this is what we're currently trying to do on this new path, this new journey here. 
uh, trying to get to 34 within six months, trying to see how long it takes after that to unlock one of these ships, probably take at least another month or two uh, to get the 150 blueprints. It's a lot of faction credits, relatively speaking, compared to the other ships. So, um, but if you're curious just how much of a difference there is between the 26s and the 28s, that's what we're going to show you. And let me see if I, yep, nope, I need the other one. Okay, so we're going to start right here at the top. We're going to take a legionary, which is the battleship. We're going to take the Bortos, which is a battleship. I'm going to put them side by side, do a little comparison after I grab a sip of water. Okay. So what are we talking about here? In terms of overall cost, cost to acquire is double to get one of the 28s. 10,000 faction credits for one of these guys versus 20,000 for one of these guys. Again, there are a couple of missions that you can do that'll get you, you know, five or ten blueprints here to kind of get you a head start. These are also available in your away team store. So you can also pick up some blueprints on the side that way. And then occasionally when you have in like an event store, these, these ships will also appear in that and are relatively cheap. Uh, by comparison. So it's not a bad idea to pick up a handful of those just to speed this process along to get yourself one of these guys built. It's double the cost. We acknowledge that right up front. But what are you getting for that double cost? We're going to start this over. I was just eyeballing these. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at tiers one through five, right? The first half of upgrading the ship. What are you getting out of it? What is it costing you? You can usually get through the first couple of tiers pretty quickly and pretty easily. Looking at our overall costs, obviously the 28 is a little bit more, but it's not a lot more, you know? It's a little bit more in the commons, which you can convert latinum to use to buy the common resources, so you don't necessarily have to wait around farming the stuff. 500 more uncommon here, less than 100 more uncommon crystal. Uh, dilithium is actually slightly cheaper on this one, but the tritanium is higher. So a slight additional cost here as well. But what are you getting for that additional cost? The most important stat when looking at these kinds of things is DPR. Stands for damage per round. On average, how much damage are you doing per round? Just the base cost. Again, not any officers or other bonuses or research and things increasing your damage. This ship, Tier 5, is doing 20,000 points of damage per round. The Bortas is doing almost double that at 38,000 points per round. Significantly higher amount of damage. Hull Health, this one actually has more. This one has more shields, though. So especially with those new Strange New World officers, if you happen to be using them, Pike directs a lot more of the damage into the shields to protect the hull cost. Well, if your shield health is double, which it basically is here, uh, those shields stay up longer, and Pikes, you know, can do his thing. If we come down a little bit, we'll take a look at the firing pattern real quick, the two ships, and see that this particular ship has an extra shot in round one. It's The Legionary is pretty consistent with its two phaser shots every round, and every three rounds it gets a big weapon shot. Big weapon shot every three rounds. The Bortas fires its big weapon in round one and only has a one round cooldown between it. Some of these other weapons here kind of take an on off, on off kind of thing. So you're looking at three shots in round one, only, you know, both with torpedoes here. Uh, three shots in round one compared to two. Gets a little bit less here, but then again, round three, they're both firing the same. So this is uh, three, six, seven shots through the first three rounds. Whereas this is also seven shots, but it's doing more upfront damage. So again, if you have officers that add uh, to crit chances, like uh, Gorkon, who adds to crit for the first two rounds, uh, Harrison, who reduces their shield mitigation for the first round of a fight, that kind of stuff, um, you know, you can hit a little bit heavier with these bigger weapons in round one, as opposed to just these tiny little phasers firing consistently throughout the whole fight. Other things to take note of, 
uh, crew slots. This ship will only hold five crew members at max, whereas this one will get a sixth crew slot and a seventh eventually. And the other thing to take into consideration here is the warp range on these ships. At tier 5, this ship has a warp range of 33, not getting you terribly far uh, into certain faction spaces at 33. At tier 5, this ship has a warp range of 40. 40 is what you need to get to some of the more decent systems for hostile grinding, especially some systems that are going to have things that are 37 to 40 excuse me, in attack value, uh, in, in, in ops level, basically, uh, levels of the, of the ship. As you progress through your faction dailies, you know, your reputation increases, you change levels, your dailies increase, and you have to kill ships of higher levels. Having the warp range to reach those systems becomes a bit more of a challenge. This maxes out at warp range 50. That's significant for a secondary reason whereas the Bortas, the 28 ship, is going to get you all the way to 60. If we go back into the game for a second, what's the difference between the 50s and the 60s? I'm going to show you one key system, the system everybody talks about, right? So if you're looking at warp range, we'll just go up here and we'll take a look. So can you get to Andoria at 33? Yes. Could you get to Sirius? No, that requires 38. So you can't even get there, 33 or 36. You want to get to Axanar. Well, that takes 45. You know, uh, Groombridge takes 40, and so does Sol, right? The capital system. So these take 40 to get to. And some of these other higher systems, you know, take 40, 45. Getting out here, and some of these other ones here will take even higher, 47, all the way up to 50 for some of these other systems. But the key system for rep grinding is now, and probably forever shall be, this wonderful system called Tiger Core, which requires warp 53. So even if you maxed out that legionary, it would only get to warp 50, and you would not be able to make it out here. You would still need to then upgrade another ship pretty significantly in order to make it all the way out to Tiger Core. What makes this system so great? We've talked about it in other videos, and I'm sure another, uh, a bunch of other content creators have mentioned it as well. This system was originally coded with higher level ships. The ships in it have the background coding as if they are like level 43 or 44 strength. Level 43, I think is what it is, strength ships. They give you the reputation value for higher level ships. They give you the loot tables off of those higher level ships, but they were reskinned and their strength was lowered to be regular 38s, 39s, and 40s like some of these other systems. So they're easy to kill, but they give a lot more reputation and a lot better loot. This is the only system in the game that does this because, again, it was intended to be something else. They reskinned it, didn't fix the back-end coding of it, so you still get all the extra benefits as if they were the higher levels. They tried to fix it a couple years ago to change the loot tables and to, to lower the reputation values to make it more consistent with other nearby systems. Everybody lost their mind and said, no, you can't change this. You have set the precedent. This is what we expect now. This is how the game works. You screwed up and you have to live with it. And they went, okay, you're right. We did. And they changed it back very quickly within a matter of weeks. I think it was, there was so much public outcry. Uh, about people threatening to quit and leave the game because they were so mad about the system getting changed. So, uh, this is the magic system, and you need warp 53 to get there. So, if nothing else, there's your, there's your, uh, if that's your deciding factor. The other thing I do want to talk about, obviously, both ships, you know, because they're Romulan or Federation ships, they both have the ability to cloak. That's okay. But there's something else I do want to point out here as well, and it's in the stats. And it is with the second cost of tiers. Obviously, the cost is going to go higher from tier 5 and up. They're not, they're fairly close together in the lower levels, and you're getting a lot more value out of the tier 5 Bortos than you are out of the tier 5 Legionary. 
what about when you get higher? If we max this ship all the way out to tier 9, its damage per round caps here at 26,164. I'm just going to slide this down. DPR, level 1, right out of the box. You just built the ship, you launched it, you got that great little graphic. You haven't upgraded a component, you haven't added anything to it, you haven't even put officers on it yet. Its DPR is still 5,000 points higher. And you've spent all these resources grinding this ship all the way up to level 45. And it's still doing less damage than this ship is right out of the box. And then as you level it up and you get all the way up here to tier 9, DPR 66,000, which is about two and a half times different. It's got significantly higher armor, so you're taking less damage. You've got more mitigation going here. And it's got more shield piercing, armor piercing, and accuracy, so you're lowering their mitigation. It's got about the same hull health, but again, it's got about double, not quite double, the shield strength. So again, funneling more into uh, that shield for those Strange New World officers. The costs are a bit more significant. As you get up, from, as you go from 5 to 9, you're looking at 3,000 more uncommon ore, which is a little harder to source. did get a little bit easier uh, for the, the mid-30s with the refinery changes, but people still in this range, 20 to 30, three uh, do still have the the regular refinery the refinery change that scopely just released here in august 2022 uh boosts the ref the, the rates the payouts uh for people ops 33 and up they really want to funnel people and get everybody to that point in the game much quicker they don't want people sort of camping out in the low 20s mid 20s high 20s uh, for long periods of time they want you to keep pushing and get to 33 34 it's kind of in that sweet spot of the game so that's where they kind of drew the line in terms of upgrading the refinery. Um, but you're looking at significantly higher here in terms of damage. And yes, the costs are a bit more. The rare isn't as bad. It's a little bad here with the ore, but the crystal's pretty similar. Um, and then obviously you're looking at, you know, 7,000 and 2,200 versus, you know, 55, 5400 combined here, as opposed to 9200 combined here. So, a lot more. But you're getting a lot more value out of it. And like I said, this ship's going to max out under a million. If you took it all the way to tier 9, you'll be somewhere in the 900, 950 range, maybe, on power. Whereas this one will get you about 1.4, 1.5 million. And then again, as you increase your officers, as you increase your researches those numbers will change. Oh. We'll take a quick pause here. I'm going to talk about the Franklin as well. Hopefully you've got your Franklin, or if not, you're just stockpiling your frequency modulators. Because what you want to do, ideally in this range here, your Franklin starts to turn the corner around Tier 5. Oh, tier 1 through 4, it's not very good. It doesn't put out a lot of damage. It doesn't have a lot of uh, defense ability kind of dies pretty quickly. Tier 5 is where it starts to turn the corner a little bit. The upgrades at Tier 5 are pretty significant in terms of getting more shield and more hull health and more evasion and the weapons doing more damage. So you're, you're killing things faster and you're taking less damage and it starts to turn that corner. And by, you know, Tier 5 is where you're able to really consistently start killing 28s. And then tier 6, you're killing 30s. And then tier 7, you're consistently killing 32s pretty regularly, which is where your dailies are going to be uh, in that 28 to 32 range. 28 to 30, you're killing uh, some 30s. You, know, you do mostly 28s, you'll kill 10 30s. Then by the end of it, you're killing uh, mostly 30s and maybe like 10 32s. When you get to Ops 32, this just comes up to here. So now your dailies are kill 20 32s and kill 25 32s and if you have a tier 7 franklin that's pretty easy to do um, whether you're using pike moreau talon or you're using strange new world pike and spock and laon or somebody else in that third slot um, 
you can easily, you know, when you get to tier 7, uh, killing 15 to 20 level 32s is not bad at all. That's also where, for your Sunday Swarm event, to get your con shards and things, um, you're going to have to kill 32s to do that. So continue to work on the Franklin and, and build it up in the background. Um, obviously, if you have one of these bigger ships, if you have a Saladin or a Centurion, you know, or a Bortas, you can use those to kill swarms. Um, it's just not as effective and as efficient. They have a much higher repair time and a much higher repair cost associated with it, whereas the Franklin is a lot cheaper to do. Uh, and the Franklin's only real key component in terms of upgrading it are these frequency modulators. You're also going to want to keep moving towards it because by the time you get to 35, you want to have your Franklin ready to go, ready to scrap it. And you need it to be at tier 9 in order to get there. So keep building on it, keep working it up. It does get better. I know up until this point in the game, it really hasn't been all that useful, but it is a way to sort of turn the corner. And if you're moving through ops levels fairly quickly and you're not really investing a lot in ships and you're just burning your way through the game, um, you know, having a Franklin to fall back on will also help let you keep up with these types of dailies and with the Swarm Sunday events. All right, so we've talked about the heavy hitters. Let's talk about the miners. Let's switch tabs here. Okay. So we've got our ECS Horizon, which you get at Ops 26, and we've got a faction ship. I picked the Valkus just because that's the one that came up first. Doesn't matter. They all have the same relative costs. They all take the same resources, which is gas and crystal. Doesn't matter which of the three you build, they all take gas and crystal. Um, the Horizon you get at 26, Valkus you get at 30. Each ship of the, the faction ships, depending on which faction you pick, the ship benefit is a mining increase to one particular resource. So if you're mining ore, you get a nice big bump of ore. But when you're mining gas or crystal, there's no benefit to it, which is the same as the Horizon, which is benefit is only really mining dilithium, which nobody does except for a couple of missions that you get early on that you kind of just throw in archives and eventually you work your way back to and do them just to get them done and out of the way. In terms of overall cost to upgrade, you can see here getting a Horizon from Tier 1 to Tier 5 relatively low in terms of the material costs. 68 gas, 329 crystal, as opposed to 10 times as much, 650 gas, 3200 crystal. It literally is a multiplier of 10. Tritanium, dilithium, survey parts, pretty much all consistently 9 to 10 times as much just going from tier 1 to tier 5 on these ships. Damage, it's a minor, who cares? Cargo bay is what we're looking at. Max cargo bay, much higher. It's a little more than double, but you're paying 10 times as much for that space. Protected cargo, isn't all that much higher. You know, you go from 2,000 to 3,500 base protected cargo. That's not enough of an, of, at this stage of the game, that's not enough of a difference to justify 10 times the cost for this particular ship. Uh, and if you want to talk about warp range, we'll come down here and look at those as well. Warp range is significantly higher. At Tier 5, you can get all the way out to Warp 40 systems, whereas the Horizon can only get to 27. You have to max a Horizon for it to get to Warp range 40 versus Tier 5. However, for the same amount of resources, you can max a Horizon. Almost the same identical costs in terms of gas, a little bit of rare. You do need a little bit of rare here, for sure. 
Uh, crystals almost the same. Gas almost identical the same. Survey parts, this does take a lot more survey parts to get all the way out here, but again, you can buy those with platinum. Uh, but getting all the way out to uh, tier 9, cargo bay, still slightly less protected cargo, still slightly less. But you got there earlier, because you get this ship at 26, whereas you get this ship at 30. So you've already been working on this one. Uh, the warp range is there. You're, you're, you've matched it. And because you got a bigger head start early on with this ship, uh, you've had those resources probably more readily available to invest in your 28 faction ship, whichever one you got. Um, a good horizon will definitely get you through. Uh, like I said, the protected cargo isn't all that much different. So when you're out there mining with your Stan to Pring crews, or your if you happen to have the Borg guys, um, you know, modifying that, you've got your treasury upgraded, modifying those things. Uh, are you going to see a slight increase in, in these ships? Yes, you are. And then obviously from the rest of the way, it gets much better. But how much more... You see this right here? To go from 5 to 9, 28,000 crystal to max out one of these bad boys. 28,000 crystal, 6,000 gas. That is an absolute ridiculous number. You get all the way to warp range 70, though. And your, your cargo, again, this is the base, only goes up to 750 and 5,000 protected. There's so many other modifiers that go into cargo capacity on things between officers and researches and your treasury building and those things. Um, there's even an exocomp that adds cargo capacity for a couple of hours. So the cost associated with one of these ships can wait till later. Upgrade your horizon, save the resources, don't spend them on this. Don't spend the faction credits on this one either. You, when you're working on grinding your faction rep, and you're killing those high level, you know, 37, 38, 39 guys, or your Antigua Corps killing the 39s and 40s out there, you are going to get so many of these ship blueprints that drop that you can, by the time you're ready to build it, and you've got your epic ship, and you've got everything else going, and you're in your mid-30s, you can circle back to this one. The Horizon will get you through just fine. You can build two Horizons uh, and have them both out and still pay way less than you would for one of these guys. And for most of the mining nodes, there's plenty of, of open nodes in those G3 systems. You know, there are plenty of open nodes or nodes available in all of these systems, whether you need, you know, or, 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 or. They added a couple systems recently. You know, there's plenty of nodes in these systems that you don't need to be able to get up to, you know, these systems out here to get some of these higher end nodes. They're a little larger. You can set them for a little bit longer period of time and not have to come back as often. That's your, your bigger advantage to it. The mining rate is still the same. Um, if you have territory, though, you also offset some of that advantage. Um, just for an example. So... Here, we'll go to... This is a level 29 system. Obviously, a warp 22 ship can get there. Morska. These nodes are typically around 8,500. See if we can find one. Yeah, there's not an empty one, but we can look at it anyway. So, this is an envoy, mining at about 4,000 an hour. This is a Horizon with the wrong crew, mining about 7,000 an hour. And just if I flip my officers around, this is what, a tier 5 Horizon? Tier 7 horizon. So I've already gotten it up that far. Uh, so it went from 7,000 an hour up to 11,000 an hour. But if your alliance holds any territory, then you already have a bigger advantage depending on the territories you have. You look at a system like Bertha here that we own. This is a three-star 
a two-star territory that has three-star materials in it. These are 30,000 nodes, and they mine faster. I get 16,000 an hour. I don't need to get to those deeper, further reaches because my alliance has some of them in its territory captured. Maybe you've got one, maybe you've got two, but at least it cuts down on some of your mining. Oh, we've got a territory fight going on right now. I apologize for not being there, guys. And if you happen to have the three-star system that has the grade three and the grade four resources, these nodes are even bigger. These are 50,000 and you mine them at 22,000 an hour, which is where we're going to send this guy right now. And this guy. So you've got much more capacity and you've got a higher mining speed. It's one of the perks of owning particular territories and depending on what your alliance. It's also the reason I keep talking about being in a good alliance. Uh, be in an alliance that can hold some territories. Makes your life easier. You're not fighting over nodes as much. You're mining faster and more efficiently and, and larger periods of time too. You can set it and forget it a little bit more. Not as many people are going to be trying to hit you when you're zero, knocking you off those nodes. So uh, all that's to say that the faction miners can wait. Uh, you can work on those later when you're in that gap between like 34 and, and 39. You can circle back and work on a faction miner then if you want to. If you have your amalgam upgraded, which you get at 31, uh, the faction miner also loses some of its benefits because if you're thinking about, well, I need the bigger cargo capacity so I can raid bases. Well, now you don't need to raid bases with the Volcus. You can do it with the amalgam. And just to put these guys side by side, sourceable through cosmic cleanup takes 13 weeks. You get eight blueprints a week. You need 100 blueprints to build the ship. So it's 12 and a half weeks, but you can't get half, so 13 weeks. And just get one of these guys up to tier five, relatively speaking. Uncommon resources. You're also using different resources here. You're using ore instead of gas. Um, but look at these resources. Much lower. The amalgam parts is what's going to slow you down because these are only able to be sourced through the amalgam refinery, which has a three-day cooldown on it, uh, or an event store where you would buy the parts and upgrade your ship. Fun fact, since we're talking about event stores real quick, uh, things like the... I won't see it in here because I don't own any of the ships. But things in here, like the Amalgam, the Dvorfisha, and the Cerritos. Those are the three ships that you can buy parts for in an event store. Those, the amount, the cost of those bundles stays the same. Currently for this event it was 7500 per bundle. The amount of parts you get will change based on the tier of your ship though. So if you have a tier 1 Amalgam and you buy parts it might say a thousand parts for 7500 currency. If you buy parts and you upgrade your ship to tier 2, it'll still say 7500 currency, but now you might get 1200 parts per bundle or 1500 parts per bundle, whatever it is. So if you are going to use an event store to upgrade a specialty ship, like one of those three I just named, uh, buy enough parts just to get you up one tier, tier the ship up, then come back and buy the rest of your parts. But let's look at these guys. So, again, we're paying less in overall resource costs. Tier up time is the same. Obviously, repair cost on this one is a bit higher. As is the repair time should it get destroyed. But if we look at the cargo capacity, which is really what it's a minor, what we care about. Tier 5 cargo capacity, 875 as opposed to 412. Protected cargo, 18,000 as opposed to 3,500. Warp range, 70 as opposed to 40. This amalgam that you get at 31 is pretty significantly better than any of the faction miners for the base rating purposes, for looting, stealing cargo off things, even for uh, hitting OPC stuff, right? You've got a much bigger cargo hold and a much higher protected cargo amount. So you're going to be able to you know, get away with more. 
it's slower in terms of actual mining. It's not what it's intended for. Um, but it can still do some mining. This is what you would use for an overnight miner because it's slower. You park it on a node overnight. Instead of taking three hours to empty it, it takes seven hours to empty it. Perfect. I'm going to bed. Set it. Wake up seven hours later. Oh, good. Now my node's just about finished. Let me call my ship out before it gets destroyed for being on a zero node and call it back. And I got everything overnight and I don't have to wake up to a dead ship that I have to repair. A little bit more efficient that way to do it. But this is another benefit. This is available at 31. You can start getting it. If you save up some of your cosmic cleanup tokens, you can get a little faster. You can also buy the blueprints in the event store. Uh, when they have them every three to four months, to again, help speed that up a little bit quicker. Spent a lot of time talking about the ships because they're the main feature here as well in this little window. The other thing that does uh, happen a little bit in this in this block of time is with your research again not really any new buildings or any new tricks here uh, so research territory you get into this tier here when you get to 30 these are now different efficiencies that you can get that will lower the cost of crystal gas and ore for one for research one for ship upgrades one for buildings Anything you, anytime you can do anything that's an efficiency, it's a huge benefit to get it done. Especially these in the territory because these ones only take these specialty resources. This is the isogen you get for refining isogen. These are the special particles that you get either for owning a territory that has them, where you can do your daily refine, which... By the way, I think I should be about due for uh, over here in my territory tab. Yep, there's my phantom particles. Make sure to claim my hundred of those because my alliance owns a territory that has the phantom particles. Uh, for the ones that I don't have, though, the other two, once you get a meridian, you can come into your territory. Like normally you see these isogens, and depending on if your alliance holds a territory that has the improved ability, it'll increase your efficiency rates. Once you get a meridian, this thing over here opens up where you you refine raw isogen into this stuff and then you refine that stuff one step further from the iso emulsion to this iso resin. There's four researches that you can do. We'll look at those in just a second. They're mostly PvP based, but you also get very small quantities of these. These change based on the tier of your meridian the outputs, you know, at uh, tier one, tier two, it might be like 10 a day. Uh, and if you need 100 for a research, it's going to take a little while to do, It'll take, you know, 10 days or whatever. Uh, as you get a little higher, they'll scale up a little bit. You'll get 12, 15, 18, 20 a day. I think at tier nine, I think I still only get like 24. So it's not great, but it's there. It's an alternate alternative way to get the materials that you need. Looking in the territory tree, once you get past this first little block here, now across the top, all takes one type of particle. In the middle, all takes the same type of particle. At the bottom, all takes the same type of particle. So uh, whatever you don't hold, you're going to have to do that extra refinery way and kind of save up to do these other researches. And like I mentioned, though, unlike your station researches or your outlaw researches that say, hey, if you want to lower the cost of using gas for buildings, well, it's going to charge you, you know, you have to spend 2,000 gas to get the efficiency research. These researches don't cost you any gas, so they're not hindering your progress. You want to build something that costs 3,000, but you only have 2,000, but you can do the efficiency research, and you're like, should I do it, or should I just save for the thing? In the long run, it's always better to just do the research but I mean, you've got 2,000, the thing costs 3,000, you do the research, you're down to zero again, what does the thing cost now? Well, now it costs 2,900. And you're like, well, great, now i got to save up all the way again. Yep, that thing costs only 100 bucks less. Everything after that is also going to cost less, so you're going to make back what you spent over time. But in terms of seeing that immediate effect, and I want this thing now, yeah, those researches are a little more questionable. These are not. You spend zero gas 
and now you get a benefit. And there's some decent five nine you know re reductions here uh, as you advance through the different tier levels. You just need the particles and you need the isogen. So again, my isogen mining is so is an important factor. People talk about getting a meridian. People talk about getting two meridians sometimes. So you can just keep pulling in these big numbers and uh, and keep doing lots of refines. Uh, the max refines every day to get higher amounts of the isogen so you can keep paying for all these researches. These don't come into play till later on. I mentioned that that isogen research, or refinery rather, gives you something called isoresin. Isoresin is used for four specific researches. This isocharged deflector shields, defense cannon, close encounter, and cargo hold, another cargo booster takes this iso resin which you got once you have a meridian that's why everybody makes the meridian a priority in an event store it's the only way to get it and it gives you access to these other materials this right here max cargo size for all survey ships giving you more capacity in all of them uh, close encounters here is when you're defending or attacking capture nodes you get a damage bonus this one here Reduces damage taken in PvP. It's not much, but hey, every little bit counts. And defense cannons here is you increase the damage dealt when you're defending in PvP. So if someone just attacks you anywhere, you're getting a little bit more of a damage output bonus. And again, it's only requiring this resin to do it. It doesn't require really any other resources. Um, so these are good... These three are very good PvP bonuses. This is just a bonus of just cargo capacity for all ships, um, all survey ships. And there's one you'll also want to upgrade as you can. There are additional researches here in, say, your outlaw tree. You got to this point, you got your Stella unlocked at 27. You can kind of advance a little bit into this tree right here. When you pick Anarchist Weapon and you unlock this, it will give you one of these little particles. It only gives you one. So you have to pick, do you want to go the top route or the bottom route? I chose the bottom route. The reason I chose the bottom route is because it has two benefits for the Stella, upgrading the hull health and the shield health, whereas the top half only has one real benefit, upgrading the weaponry the second one here upgrades the warp drive it's nice yes the stella gets there a little faster but maybe you're dying faster or if you don't die as much you don't need to go back and forth as quick so i chose the bottom half first you'll notice that it does have different efficiencies you know the top half has a research efficiency the bottom half has a, a building efficiency the same will be true as you move later on crystal and gas and or efficiencies when you get so choose a path whichever one you want again like I said I picked the bottom half just because I liked these two benefits more than just having the bigger guns if you want to shoot stuff and do more damage go for the top half when you get the 31 you'll be able to buy in the rogue store this eclipse defense research when you complete this tier one it gives you the second particle. So then you can go back and work on the other half of the research. So it's not like you're locked out forever, you're just locked out for a short period of time. It will also give you a particle. This is a beta particle, which you get, which again, you're faced with the same choice in your low 30s moving forward. Do I want the top half or the bottom half? And then when you get to, I think this is 35, 35, uh, and you learn Rogue Tactics, it gives you the other particles, so then you can go back and learn the other half. Uh, in this particular case, I went the bottom half the first time around. My recommendation, we'll cover this again later, would be to do the top half the second time. Uh, you've got Piercing and Defense, which are both good. Uh, but up here, Highway Robbery gives you more loot from Stella kills, so you get more Stella uh, either Armada Credits or uh, Eclipse Codes, whereas this one right here, Ship Component Efficiency, just lowers the, the cost efficiency for all ship components. Um, this is Parsteel, Tritanium, and Dilithium. 
I believe is what this is lowering here. But some of these ships get very expensive with those. So reducing that cost right there to me is a little more valuable than something like highway robbery. We'll get to that later when you get there. Uh, but just know that it's only a temporary choice for a couple of ops levels. You pick one at 28. You work your way through upgrading these a little bit where you can. You get to 31, you get this, and then it gives you the ability to go back and work your way through the rest of the, the tree. Uh, different away team missions also open up as you move a little further out here. You start to get these, which boost warp speed. So again, not necessarily needing some of the other stuff to boost it. And then you get these that boost damage. And by the end, now you're starting to get into these where you can boost mining speeds. Boosting mining speeds here also slightly... Uh, offsets the need for having that faction miner. Oh, I really want to, to mine faster. I don't. I want to get that that Valkis or whatever, so I can mine ore faster. I mean, you do have a way team research right here that's going to improve your mining speed. Like we mentioned, you have the territories that'll improve that mining speed. You also have in your galaxy tree things that will improve your mining speed. Um, you know that that extra Valkis ship bonus is still great to have on top of it. But you can still get by pretty well at a pretty decent pace uh, with just doing some of these other upgrades that'll get you further along. And you'll be able to invest those resources in other ways. Last thing I want to talk about, of course, is the faction rep. Um, as you advance your faction rep, whatever you are, I recommend continuing recommend working on two at the same time so you get the faction credits so you can flip-flop between... You know, if you do, if your main faction is Romulan, that's your Killin' Federation, your main faction is Romulan, side faction is Klingon, at 26, get the Klingon D3. Use your faction credits you've accumulated to buy that one, buy the cloaking for it. Go ahead and, you know, work that up and get your cloaking dailies and stuff done. Save your other credits for your 28 ship, whatever you do, vice versa. You know, pick one and then do the other one at 28. That way you're not overlapping, and that way you have the credits available when you get to those different levels. Yay, we won. Um, augment store, you want to continue working on this. Hopefully, in this range, you should get this maxed out at around a million reputation. When you do, the big benefits here are in these particular boxes. This box here... It slowly starts with just these guys, and then you add Marla, then Jochim, and eventually you get to Khan. I'll go ahead and pull my Khan shards now. Hopefully. Oh, didn't get them. Uh, but a good way to start unlocking that officer. These guys right here, they're a decent crew, but more importantly, they're also good. To, they're good for lower deck slots. They're good for away team missions because they have higher stats because they're enhanced. Um... And most importantly, this is a consistent way to source these officers, which means that they are going to max out quickly or quicker than a lot of your other officers, which is in turn going to turn into transporter patterns. And that's what you want to eventually get to, so then you can start working on other things. The rogue store is the one that you don't want to upgrade quickly. Can I do this yet? No. Because right now, I only need... If I want to do this reps... I only need 12,000 Eclipse codes, and this is kind of what I'm getting out of it. When I get to the next rep level here at Accomplice soon, this goes up pretty substantially. I think, that's what, I think it goes all up to like 25 or 30,000 a day that you need to do, but you're getting almost the same rewards. The amount of directive Armada directives you're getting are about the same. You get a little bit more in Rogue credits, a little bit more in rep, but everything now costs more. The officers in your outlaw recruit box increase, and you get a little bit more, you know, steadily increasing who they add here. But, again, everything costs a lot more. This is the one you want to take your time working your way through. Don't be in a rush. Don't pull this exchange heist loot box just to get these extra bundles of reputation to try and build up your reputation, because all you're doing is making more work for yourself. You're going to spend more time grinding. Um, and especially, too, in the early stages of your Stella, it's not that great. You have to, The Stella is built through the research. The research involves leveling it up and scrapping it multiple, multiple times. 
uh, certain ops level restrictions, like we pointed out, getting you to the other half of that research tree. So you got to work your way up one side, then go back and build up the other one just to kind of keep that ship going so you can get to the point where you can uh, really start killing stuff consistently and, and bringing home larger quantities. You know, if you can only get 8,000 a day and your daily is 12,000, well, that's not so bad. It's, you know, two trips, you know, three trips, and then you're good for two days or whatever like that. If you're still killing the same 8,000, you know, a, a day or a hull, but now you need 30 or 35,000, well, now you got to make four trips per day uh, to keep that moving along. And that's where people are just like, ah, screw it. This is this is this takes too long. This is too much. This is stupid. And they give up on it. And then they are missing out on a key component of the game, uh, which is all the other research that's in that tree. You have to do some of the stellar research to unlock it or to uh, tear things up or to get past it to get to some of those other benefits that are in that tree that affect all of your ships. I think that's all I had to talk about today. Hopefully you found this helpful, informative as always. Uh, leave some comments down below if there's something that I missed that you have questions about or you want more details about. I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you around the galaxy.